is a very giant massive system. But if I talk about it, let me grab some coffee. So I'm not really really scared to get my coffee onto this because it's just a it's just a metal sheet. It's so not nothing's gonna happen. So let's get into opening this thing. Let's see what's got. We got some pair of scissors. All right, come now you. All right. So I don't know. This is very interesting here. So let's try to open this thing. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. This is a bit steady. I don't know what I don't know what the name of this is called. Uh, just put that there. And then a few more boxes, a, f a few more of this. Oh, I think this is the arm to it. Uh, I'll also put this here. Probably it doesn't fall on me. Uh, there's something. Put this somewhere. Oops. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about. And then there is what seems to be like the if you've seen a system before, I'll just try and put this here if it doesn't fall. Yeah, if you've seen a system before, it's got to have the legs, I think. So this is probably the leg thing. Yep, the legs um, just make it much easier to hold my assistant while I'm trying to unbox this thing. All right. Uh, that's all. What? No manual, nothing. Just this. That's. Oh God, I feel ripped off. But it's got to have lots of things in. Ah. Well, I just put that box there. Ah. They're not trying to deal with this now. All right. So let's talk about. Systems. So this is, I don't know how many of the parts are called. Hi, uh, so I've been editing this video, the one, for, the one you're watching right now, right now. And I was doing research on, on systems and I realized that this, which I called, well, this is something. The lock thing? They're actually called gobos. <laughs> Gobo. <laughs> That's a funny name. So this is a gobo head. Uh, it's the one that goes on top of the system. And this one here, I've actually used it to fill something. Uh, this one here is called the gobo arm, I think. Oh, I am so terrible. I think it's gobo arm. Oh, gobo arm. Whatever it is, it has gobo to it. So you got to bear with me here. Uh, all I know this one is Gobo. Uh, so I've used, I have a system, one that my light's on. Uh, and then I decided to purchase another one. So I can probably talk about it. Uh, I think actually this one, I might like this one a bit more than the one I have. And I'll tell you why on a few things. Or maybe I may not like it as, as the way I like the other one. Uh, but this is this feels a bit more more ste steady. I think the metal, but it's a, it clicks a bit and makes it a lot of noise. So probably maybe I may be wrong. Uh, I got this cistern from if you live in Kampala, 
I got, oh, Uganda, I just widen it a bit. If you live in Uganda, I got this system from Valid, Valid Electronics. That's what they call it, Valid Electronics. Yeah, so this is not a sponsorship, just letting you know if you need to grab one, you can give them a call or, yeah. So, I wish they could sponsor, but probably not. Uh, so this is the arm. So this is the arm that will go here. And uh, the way my other stand is set up, so one of these will come here, this one, probably, or uh, maybe not. Uh, or this way around. Let me see. Yeah, uh, this way around will come in here. Okay, that sits in there and that holds it there. And now, uh, might be wrong, I might not like this one more. Okay, then, then this arm will probably go through somewhere here. So I will need to align. This one's got some really funny stuff that I think you need to align properly for it to work well. Hmm. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so after you align it, uh, then the holes align properly. And I think this is where this arm goes through here. Maybe I need to open it first. Okay. Oh, it's quite got some work to, to be done before you before you start playing with it. Uh, it's not as easy as easy plug in and play like the one that I'm using. All right, good. So here we go. Now that that's in, feels a bit solidly stable. Oh, uh, uh, that's locked in there. So I think if you need this to move, you just unlock, try and open this here. If you need to get this one moving and then if you need to close it. Yeah, I think, you, and make sure that the things align here. And then we're left with one extra of this. So I think where we can put this could be somewhere maybe here or just to keep it safe like the way I do with the other one and then you can and then you can use this then to attach more arms if you have uh, something like this if you have uh, more of these arms I think you can you can screw a few in here and then you can plug it so yeah what I've been doing is I will try and get this a bit closer to me. So what I've been doing with the other one, I've been just, get, oh, it has a thing. So it has this, and then what I've been doing is I, what I've been doing, what I've been doing, what I've been doing. What, have, what I have been doing is I've been, basically doing this. I get this one in, like so, and then, yeah. So once you get this one in, that, then you can, then you can adjust your light how you want and how you want it to look. So it's, it helps you hold probably a light closer to, let's say you, you're doing food photography and you needed a specific light to just shine somewhere small. Uh, this is where this come in handy. If you're trying to get these, this top down, I'll give you a look with what I'm doing with my, with my other light on top. I have, I have the arm which goes through up there. I connect my aperture dome onto it and then I connect my light and then my light is on the arm. Just the way this one has been, has come on. So the beauty of the system is that you can rotate it like this and then you can it gets easier to move your lights around as opposed to my other stand that I'm that I'm having my my aperture light on on 
on a, a really, really sketchy, and a really, really sketchy light. So let me grab this light and let me show you the thing that I'm having. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so I'm having it on this light. So this is, this is sort of like the normal light stand. They're really, really not expensive. That means that they break quite easily. I didn't have any other option to where to put my uh, light, so I opted for this. I've had this for a very, very long time. Honestly, I don't remember how long I've had it. I don't remember where I got it from. It's just been sitting in here and I usually take it out and shoot, but I can't tell you where I got it from. I'll go ahead and get my Nova off. Turn it off a bit here, get the cable out. And there is two ways I would mount this one on. So one of the ways is to take this off and basically just mount it on the stand uh, the way oh. so basically I'll, I'll, I'll unlock it down here so the idea is to mount it on the stand the way I had it mounted on the first one so this is how I would mount it in the first place and if I just want uh, directional light from from one side from just a straight on like this then I think I would mount it on like this and use your screw here pin to yeah to just lock it in like that and then how things will then start to get a bit complicated is when you want to start angling your light, having it maybe come from up here, the way this one's doing. Uh, and then with that comes lots, lots of issues. One, this, this light is very, very heavy. Uh, and then the other thing that you need to worry about is how, how strong is this? So the arm. Uh, when, when you place a light that is about 15 kilos, will this thing bend? I mean, trying to bend it like this, let me see if I can feel it. I can feel a tiny bend, and I don't think I'm applying a weight of, of about 10, 20 kilos. So I have to be a bit very cautious trying to, trying to get this, uh, my light on here. So you have to be very, very careful and that's why as a as a filmmaker you you don't really really have to do these bits by yourself you need to hire someone that is constantly going to be uh, eyeing the light at all times because anything could happen this thing could fall off from where you're mounting it and then it hits the talent or it hits whoever you're working with so you have to be extra careful with it so uh let me now try and mount it on the other way and let's see some of the, some of the things not the challenges but some of the ways that we can we can have fun with it I will start playing around with it. Oh, bring it closer to me here. All right. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> So now you start playing and angling with it. This thing is really heavy. Woo! Ah, quite heavy, quite heavy. 
So the reason that's why I've given it a very small area here is because one, if I make the road much longer on the side of the light, it is going to topple over. There are a hundred percent, it's going to topple over. What you want to do is you want to limit the space, especially like for now where I don't have any sandbags. If then I give it more weight, let me show you. Let me show you what would happen if, if I give it more weight on the other side. So I'm just going to make my arm just a bit longer here. Uh, wow, I think I'm getting impressed. So, all right, let me show you this. Very, very interesting to see. Okay, all right, so once you have this, so what I'm using now, which I, I would not recommend at any moment, is, is a hack, and this hack involves paint. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm using my, my bucket of paint as, as my weight and once I slap that on there like that I get my my, my light back in there and then I tighten it and now once I tighten it it is even the weight is evenly distributed I would never recommend this setup this is just a studio hack here uh, because I don't have sandbags, you need to have someone that is managing these lights, a, uh, like a gaffer. A gaffer that is managing these lights. Uh, so you can hire one for the day if you have your own lights, but need someone that understands your lights or understands the concept of lighting and how to manage these lights to help you out. So they'll usually have their own sandbags. So if you can buy sandbags, if you can, like me, I would have to maybe hire sandbags, but I, I'm thinking of just making my own sandbags from a really, really good material. So, this is what would probably happen uh, with me shooting here in my studio, and this is how I shoot in my studio with my paint bucket here to counter the weight, and then this. I, I haven't used a setup like this here, with my Nova because honestly I'm worried on having it on a very 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 high stand and then having to <laughs> to support it with a bucket of paint so it's not advisable in any way or in any sort. Gotta drink some coffee my throat oh so now that we're here uh, I wouldn't know much of what to say about the system. It's not very exciting. There isn't lots of things to talk about when it comes to systems other than setting them up and making sure that they're all strong and nice. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't and then give it a like, uh, give it a comment if you like. It, uh, it helps with the algorithm apparently. I don't know how the algorithm works in that way, but it helps with the algorithm and it also gives me a morale boost to go ahead and make more of these videos. Uh, it takes a lot of time to try and shoot a YouTube video and edit it and put it out there. So if you give it a thumbs up or if you recommend someone or if you share it or if you go ahead and subscribe, it means a lot. So it gives me a lot of fuel and energy to create more because I know that some people are loving the information and they need it. So go ahead and give it a like, go ahead and share, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. See you. Peace out. Bye.